All right, hello everybody. So I know I said that there'd probably be a break between videos, and there there is one. Um, I'll be going away shortly for a couple of weeks, and um, I didn't want to start the next project, um, which is going to be uh, doing emojis. You know, if you type in a word, you get the emoji instead, um, which I think will be pretty cool. But I realized I had a little bit of time for a short video, and um, there was some preliminary stuff we could do so we wouldn't have to start the actual project and then have this big break. And it was dealing with how we can store some data in Emacs. So we already know, um, particularly if I can come over here, yes, we already know that we can set up a variable in a couple of different ways. I think we talked about dev var, um, which we'll talk about more in depth later. But we, we could talk about, um, we can set a variable like some variable, and it can have like some value, and control X, control um, E to run it, and I'm using that mode, I forget the name of it now, again, that I mentioned in a previous video to show the results. Or you could do, um, you know, uh, strings or the various other data types. Uh, you could even do, you know, lambda expressions for functions. Um, lots of stuff. But we can also store more complex things. And so one of the things we've already talked about a little bit is um, in ELISP, or in LISP in general, this is a list. Um, and it's a list with three items, plus, two, and three. And if we execute it, control X, control E, um, it takes the first item, and that's your function, and it applies that function on the rest, which are the arguments. But you can also have a list as data. And so notice by putting the quote in front of it, it doesn't evaluate it. It's just that data. And we could actually put this into a variable. So um, set Q. So L1 is that variable. And this variable has um, three items in it, the plus, the two, and the three. And lists are pretty con um, fundamental to Lisp-type languages. And um, we work with them in different ways. One of the ways is um, traditionally, if we want the first item in the list, we do the car of the list. And the rest of the list, everything except the first item, is the cutter of the list. And um, you don't have to know those because um, in a lot of um, modern dialects, they can use the term first instead of car and rest instead of cutter. Um, but we use this to move through the list. So if you recall, let's make another list here. And we looked at a function called um, map car. So if we run map car and use the one plus function on the list L2, uh, plus one plus or plus one? Oh, right, right, it's one plus, but I have to do the escapey thing. Invalid reads, is that not right? Am I getting... I, I always forget. There we go. <laughs> I don't use that syntax all that much. Um, but this basically goes through the list, and internally you would write this, like if you were taking a functional programming class, you would write a recursive function which takes the car and applies the function on it, and then recursively calls on the cutter. And we don't have to do that now. We don't have to get into details there. Um, but we actually have on this list, this list is made up of individual cells, and they're known as con cells. So um, I'm over here, I am in um, artist mode. And in artist mode, we can draw with the mouse, which is kind of cool. And so this would be a con cell. And it has two pieces to it. And um, this part here is the car. And so maybe the car of the first list has the symbol plus in it. And the cutter part points to the rest. And in this case, the rest, the next thing is another cons cell. Whoops. So I can also use the middle button here to select here. And so I can make another cons cell. 
and the car of this is the two and the cutter it's going to point to something else but I'm just going to draw the other cell here and I know I'm not drawing these particularly well undo and this one has the three in it and this one has nil or null depending on the language you're using or whatever and so it's three cells and um, and that's your typical linked list so your car and is the plus and the quitter is everything else what this points to in reality this is at some location in memory like let's pretend this is at location 100 and then this is at location 108 and this is at location 112 what you'd actually have here is this would refer to 108 And this one would refer to 112. Uh, so it actually holds the address of the next cell, and then the nil would refer to zero, and that's how you know I think null terminated if you would. And that's how it can represent these things of arbitrary length. You can insert things in the middle, do all sorts of fancy things. Um, and um, very powerful, not really good for um, direct access, like, you know, like give me the fifth element. You have to start at the beginning and go through every element one at a time. Um, but it's really powerful in a lot of ways and Emacs has that and Emacs exploits it a lot and we use it a lot. And it's fundamental to everything we do. Um, but in Emacs also, well actually with Lisp, we also have another special thing. Is there's another special type of um, of um, uh, another special type. Well, actually, let me talk about how these are built. The way we build these lists are with the, um, they're called con cells because we build them with the function cons. So to start, we could say, well, let's add, put a three onto the empty list. And that's the list three. And then we can cons a two onto the front of that. And then we can cons the plus onto that. And I messed that up again. And so we're consing, cons makes a con cell and it returns it, or, yeah, and we can just build it up a piece at a time. But there's a special form called a pair, and we'll use this later. And that's when you just cons two things. Notice that that's not an empty list on the end. So in this case, for a pair, you would have, literally, this would have two in it, and this would have three. The car is two, the cutter is three, but then there can't be anything else because it's not pointing to anything else or referring to anything else like we're doing here. It's literally just three, you know, and that's it. Um, and so it's a special case that we'll use. But uh, anyway, that's lists in, um, uh, in ELISP, and, and um, they're fundamental. We've already used them a lot. Um, we're, using every, we're using them for everything, but Emacs has a couple of other things as well. Emacs also has um, vectors, and a vector is something like this. And if you use um, Clojure, this should look familiar, or even if you use Python, it looks kind of familiar. So if I type, give me the type of P1, that's a con cell. L1, that's a con, or you know, but V1 is a vector. And vectors are essentially arrays. And we can do things with them. Um, you know, like we, we can um, we can access them like arrays. We can say, give me uh, a ref first takes the array, so that'll be V1, and then the index. And that should give me two because it starts indexing at zero. Or I can say, um, what is it? A set into V1, one, hello. And then if I look at V1, it now replaced that with hello. So this lets me do array access. So if I want to do um, you know, indexed random access, I can use these vectors or I can use um, 
or I can use lists. Now, the nice thing is that there is some fluidity over these, like um, if you have a string, you can do things with strings and treat them like vectors, and you can, um, like we did map car, like let me show, let, let me see if this works. And if we do map car, that works as well. But notice, even though it did work over the vector, it gave me back the list. Now, um, you can look up, you know, you can, you, know, you can certainly look up, you know, all of the documentation for this and, um, you know, look up stuff about arrays and everything and, um, you know, and find out all the details. And we're just doing over the basics. And, and um, so, but if you need it, it's there. Um, another thing that's also here in, um, in Emacs list or an ELISP is you also have hash tables. Oops. Make hash table. And we're going to put into, um, well, actually, let's do this straight. We may, let's see if this works or not. And that's going to make a hash table. And there are other ways we can do this. But we can say, put hash, hello, that's my key, world, into my hash table. Actually, before we even run that, let's say get hash. And we're going to get the key, hello, from the table H. And notice it's nil. It's not there. Let's put it into the hash table. So now we see it's there. Now we pull this out, and it is nil, and I didn't think it was going to work. What I believe we have to do is we have to give it a test function, remake it. Now it's not there. Put it in. But now it is there. Um, and that's because we have strings in this, and um, we need to use a comparison function, the test function, and what this does, it's a hash table or a dictionary like in Python, um, and you can put multiple things in it, and there, there's a lot of other details. Like here, notice when we run this, it says that the default size is 65. There's a way of setting the size. The test is equal. We can use different types of tests like EQ, L, whatever, I don't even know. Um, rehash size, I guess it makes it 1.5 times the size. Um, the threshold, I guess that's how full it has to be before it um, resizes itself. Um, but it's a hash table. It's a dictionary. It lets you look up key value things. So that's another useful thing in ELISP. But there's another one, and this is the one we're going to use in our next project, which is sometimes you want to get hash table-like behavior, but you don't need a super heavyweight, super duper fast hash table. You just need basic key value lookups, and it's going to be on a relatively small data set. And for that, we use an association list. And the way we do that in, um, in ELISP is we just make a list, but we give it these con cell pairs. So it's a list which your first element is a con cell pair. Second element. And of course there are, um, and we can just run this. And it's just going to be a set of con cells. But what we can do here is we can say, give me the association going with B, let's say, off of my association list A. And it gives me that element. So it does the keyword lookup. And if I want to get the, um, if I want to just get the, item, the value out of it, I can get the cutter, car versus cutter. Um, but you can also do other things with these. So, for example, actually, let's see, let's bring up the help. And notice this gives you the details. Um, but other relevant functions are in the list and a list groups. So, association list. Um, associate string, like a, but specifically for strings, if we're going to use that, um, get. But anyway, we can look through all of these, etc. 
Um, not a big deal. But the association lists are what we're going to use in the next project. So it's kind of a great, easy way to do key value lookups, but it's just really lightweight. Now, one other final thing with this I want to show you is you could also do this without the pairs. Same deal. You know, say A1, whoops, or just A, sorry. A has the pairs, but A2 just has lists in there, which might be a little bit easier in certain circumstances. So both of them work. So that's a little bit of an overview, a 15-minute, 16-minute overview of some of the data structures built into eLisp. Uh, we will be using this association list in the Lex project, um, and um, it is just nice and useful, and, um, and we'll see where we go with it then. So um, anyway, that's it for today, and I'll see you all soon.